A while back, we talked about the question of whether autonomous driving systems are actually any safer than humans. We made a whole video about the lack of statistics that prove that the much vaunted claims of self-driving cars are backed up with cold, hard data. Because, to be clear, there really aren't any. There's no comparable statistics between human piloted vehicles and machine learning driven vehicles that show that autonomous vehicles are actually safer. At least none published publicly. There's a lot of statistics, sure, but actually comparable measurements of the same things? Not so much. But given the recent high profile collision from Cruise and the beginning of the rollout of Tesla's FSD version 12, we thought it was a great time to ask, how safe are autonomous cars? So before we get started, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't say how Tesla's FSD 12 rollout is going to go. But I am sceptical that without what's called artificial general intelligence, that's the kind of sci-fi utopian dream of a computer that is actually intelligent in the way that humans are. Or maybe, hopefully, in a way that's frankly better than humans are. That we're ever going to hit true autonomous driving. Cars that can drive themselves most of the time with a human overseeing them? Sure. But cars that can be autonomous robo-taxis in any area at any speed? I think not so much. We have a whole video that explains the why of this and talks about the problems with training models that we know exist. It's linked up there and down in the description. But a quick and dirty summary is that the original idea to create self-driving by having programmers hand code behaviours for situations was always going to fail because it's impossible to think of and come up with answers for every situation that might ever possibly arise. And a similar problem has been around for a long time with even the machine learning based systems which had discrete systems trained on a variety of data sets from real driving situations. The thing is, it's not being good in the 95% of common driving experiences that's the challenge, although that is a significant challenge, it's doing the right thing in the 5% or the 1% or even the 0.1% of times that things go horribly unexpectedly wrong. It's the moment that you round a corner on a slip road accelerating hard to join the freeway and unexpectedly the back tyre suddenly deflates and you're trying to control a car that wants to swim in a circle. Or the moment a deer clears the wall and drops into the road immediately in front of you. Or the moment a small child runs out from between parked cars to chase after their ball. These moments are hard to train vehicles, or indeed people for, because they're rare and each situation needs a one-off response based on very limited information. Indeed, having the car identify what kind of road you're on is hard enough. If you try to engage an SAE Level 2 system on anything other than a smooth road, say dirt or gravel or something like that, you'll experience the car scrambling to get up to speed as traction control and cruise control duke it out. And solving those edge case problems are exactly what caused Tesla to switch track and follow systems like comma.ai and for version 12 go with a system that's an end-to-end -end neural network. Basically a computer that's taught itself how to drive, the same way we teach humans. And being tested with both the kinds of situations we regularly encounter, trying to turn across busy traffic at a busy junction, or trying to merge into a busy freeway, stopping to let pedestrians cross, or just dealing with other imperfect human drivers in an imperfect world. But also, most likely in a simulated environment, throwing situations at it that are extremely rare. Now our comment section is often filled with people saying that we just love GM and poor old Nikki is painted as someone suffering from GM's mind control ray. She would love to be here dissing GM but she can't be because she's off at a press event driving a new car that we'll tell you about in a few weeks time. So you're stuck with me. In fact, if everyone who said something about this channel's alleged connection to GM was right, 
we'd both be incredibly wealthy from all of those blank checks that they say we're getting, and also we'd be first in line to drive every new EV which GM makes. Which is weird, because the last new GM vehicle we got to drive was more than a year ago. Also, to be honest, I probably wouldn't be driving a Kia. Okay, so the race has been on to build autonomous vehicles for a perceived safety benefit. And obviously there's profit, but so far there's been no demonstrable improvement in safety. And before we dive in, I can already see the angry comments about Tesla's recent safety record update, which, although it shows effectively no improvement over 2022, still reports an average of around 5 to 6 million miles between crashes on autopilot, and just over 1 million miles between crashes for human driving. Autopilot is just safer, see? Only no. It's important to remember that Autopilot mainly works on freeways and collisions of any sort are much more common in urban and suburban areas. According to the IIHS, in 2021 only around 18% of collisions occurred on interstates and freeways, the places where Autopilot is primarily used. So one would expect Autopilot type freeway collisions to be about five times less common than the non-autopilot collisions, which occur mainly off freeways. And yeah, that's exactly what we see. Now, Tesla stands will- No, Kate, uh, we're not allowed to say that. Sorry. I, I know it's a reference to Eminem's song about a super fan called Stan, but we got complaints the last time we used it. Sorry. We get complaints about everything. Um, how about Tesla Philate? Stop. No. Um, hmm. No. Auto Tesla files? No. Stop that. You're really not helping. How about, hmm, people who really like Tesla and have been, no. No, I can't say that. Uh, people who are advocates for Tesla's cutting edge tech and view everything it does uncritically. Yeah. Yeah, those people. They will no doubt point overexcitedly to the fact that even driving a Tesla manually is better than the US fleet average. But let me remind you that the fleet average is 13 years old and features like automatic emergency braking, blind spot warnings and lane departure warnings weren't common for much of that time. And it's most likely that features like that, which provide the bulk of the safety improvement, are responsible for the Tesla being better. Incidentally, at the moment Tesla doesn't report collision statistics for FSD. But what's brought this question to the fore isn't really Tesla's FSD. I mean, we could talk about that the Bay Bridge pileup last year was indeed caused by an older version of FSD, which merged and then for no apparent reason decided to slow down to 7 miles per hour on a freeway. But instead we're going to talk about Cruise, because obviously in October of last year a Cruise vehicle hit a pedestrian. Now, that the pedestrian had already been hit by another vehicle has been established. But the problem is the Cruise vehicle transitioned rapidly from a fairly ordinary driving situation, that is, driving around a busy urban environment, to an uncommon situation, that is, there was a collision in which a vehicle hit a pedestrian to an even rarer edge case situation. The cruise vehicle hit the pedestrian and they became trapped. Now the correct human response in this situation is to stop. Just stop and then deal with the immediate physical danger and the situation and then later deal with the physical and psychological trauma of the situation. Now, the robo-taxi had indeed correctly attempted to emergency brake to a stop and avoid hitting the pedestrian, but when that failed, having hit the pedestrian, it then made another decision, which was that it needed to pull over out of the road, and so it tried to, in the process dragging the pedestrian about 20 feet. That's about 6 metres. And before we go any further, in quoting from this fact-finding, this bit is pretty rough reading, so if you're watching with vulnerable people or don't want to hear the graphic description, 
you have a few seconds to skip forward to this point in the video. Crew's contractors noted patches of skin and a trail of blood on the road. The company also knew that the pedestrian had been dragged at speeds of up to 7.7 .7 miles per hour across that 20-foot drive, which is frankly terrible, and I am certain it was terrifying for the pedestrian. I'm an emergency room nurse, but I really don't think you need me to tell you what that kind of treatment does to a human body. Now, part of the reason this has come up again is that there were questions about whether crews deliberately obfuscated the dragging of the pedestrian in their reports to a variety of regulatory agencies, and it turns out that, on balance, the lawyers examining this, who were incidentally hired by crews, think that crews were so focused on correcting the media's initial narrative, which did not identify that the pedestrian was hit by another vehicle first, that they failed to really explicitly demonstrate to regulators that the pedestrian was being dragged by the vehicle. They chose instead to show footage from the vehicle without commentary during meetings that were often held online and which had significant internet connectivity problems leading to dropped frames in the videos and poor resolution. Yeah, basically a mixture of technical ineptitude, an adversarial relationship with regulators and desperate face-saving meant that neither the regulators nor the press got a clear picture of what had happened. And that should not be the case for an autonomous vehicle involved in a collision. Humans don't always remember what happened. They might remember but not want to incriminate themselves. Or they might just have misinterpreted the lead-up to the incident. But an autonomous vehicle with logs and cameras and lidar and radar, it should be possible to see with absolute certainty exactly what happened from those and the video records. It should not be a matter of a bunch of humans sat around a table trying to watch a skipping low-res video trying to work out what in the fuzzy mess is a person being dragged along the road. Part of this is no doubt that we are still in the new technology adoption phase, where devices like Comma.ai and Tesla's FSD skirt the rules because the rules are very vague and don't really exist yet, and regulations are loose and still forming organically, like a species 8472 ship, I suppose. So at the moment, they are easier to skirt. And yes, we are both hypocrites. Both Nikki and I have comma threes in our respective vehicles, and Nikki has Blue Cruise in her Ford F-150 Lightning. And we've both made extensive use of these systems. And both these systems have occasionally done some really stupid things. Uh, but the key is to remember that this is level two and maybe a bit driving. You need to keep your eyes on the road and keep monitoring them closely. Part of it is the enshittification of technology with venture capitalists wanting a quick return on a buck. That's why we have the largely useless large language models with their ability to plagiarize and lie. I mean, hallucinate, finding their way into every piece of technology, because investment in AI that was actual AI cost money and was clearly a long way off, but you can make a quick buck from these systems. Building complex systems that work reliably and well takes time, and venture capitalists want their money back quickly. And having experienced end-to-end -end machine learning control of vehicles, I can say that it's way more human-like. Most of the time, anyway. In fact, frankly, I've driven with Comma AI for tens of thousands of miles, and 90% of the time it feels like a human is driving the vehicle. And it's also human-like in the way that it sometimes does things that are really wildly unexpected. Like, I don't know, running the wrong way in a maze or suddenly eating the wrong piece of cheese. Oh no, that's mice. Ah, uh, well. Anyway, you get the point. Venture capitalists are no doubt thrilled that because these things feel like they're super close to working, they can cash out and run off to the bank. But solving those last few percent of really difficult cases to get us to actual vehicles that truly can outside a geofence zone and at unrestricted speeds be trusted to drive themselves without a human overseeing them, that's the bit that really costs time and money, and they've no desire to pay for that. And just like fuel cell vehicles, and like Mr. Musk has said, it'll be here soon. 
and every year we hear that refrain. But a big chunk of the safety challenge is that we don't really have a clear and solid way to test autonomous vehicles and their behaviours. And to be fair, we don't really have a solid way to test human drivers. And human drivers sometimes do some staggeringly stupid things. We rely on the fact that we believe that we mostly understand humans, and mostly humans do understand that when you hit objects, or worse, people, you should stop. But you only have to spend 10 seconds searching on YouTube and you'll find endless horrid videos of people not doing the sensible thing in a collision. But working out how we test what autonomous or even semi-autonomous vehicle systems like Cruise and like FSD and like Comma AI will do in an incident? That's a whole new question and it, along with the question of how we measure a vehicle's safety, is one that is becoming increasingly pressing as we get nearer to these systems being given carte blanche to operate on the roads alongside human drivers. Thanks for joining me today, and if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There's a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Randy Carter, Smithers, Vasectomies Prevent Abortions. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations, and we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. Address is also down below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below too. This month, we're celebrating Electric for Everyone with an amazing new t-shirt designed by our in-house artist and animator, Erin. Get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you've subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think this one is also well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!